ultimate luxury sedan has always had that exquisite blend of sporty performance and opulent luxury, with the secret sauce being the pleasure the car gives the driver when he drives it. Jaguar has always had that. What it hasn't had is reliability. You won't believe it, but when it comes to luxury, Lexus has always been top-notch. It's always been really reliable. What it hasn't been is very... interesting, fun, visceral. Guess what? Something may have changed. Nathan, this is fascinating. We've got two cars that approach the ultimate luxury performance sedan from completely two different points of view. Absolutely, and it's sort of like right brain, left brain when it comes to these cars. Yeah, the Jaguar has always had that emotional involvement. Right brain, whereas in the Lexus has always been very technical, very advanced, and very logical, which is left brain. But here's the thing, these cars are sort of switching. The Lexus is trying to be more passionate, more interesting, and the Jaguar is trying to be more reliable, so let's see if they succeeded. So you would think that if it's an F Sport, it must be fast. It is, but it's no faster than the regular GS. I'll show you why. Under this hood is a 3.5 liter V6 that puts out 306 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. That's okay. Surprisingly, this thing is really fast. It's all-wheel drive. Off the line, this thing is remarkably quick. Unlike Nathan's V6, I, of course, have a V8. And I don't have eight gears. I only have six. And I don't have all-wheel drive. I only have two-wheel drive with snow tires for up here in Colorado. But what I do have, which Nathan doesn't have, is 385 horsepower and, of course, about 300 pounds more in curb weight. Three hundred eighty-five horsepower. It's gonna be thirsty, and a combined nineteen miles to the gallon is not great. But if you can afford sixty-seven thousand dollars for this car, you can afford nineteen miles to the gallon. Unlike the cow that Roman's driving, that gets like nineteen miles per gallon, and realistically, I think it gets sixteen. This car gets twenty-one miles per gallon combined, and it really gets twenty-one miles per gallon combined. Kind of helps that it has a V6. It's not bad. Uh, price? It's pretty steep. It's just under sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> that engine note is worth every penny. And then when you get into the twisties like I am right now, you can just place this car exactly at the apex of a turn because that's what Jaguar does the best. It has this great combination of comfortable ride with just incredible, splendid, lively handling. It doesn't feel nose heavy even though it's got a big V8 in the front of it. It feels like it's on its tippy toes, like it wants to go exactly where you're pointing it. And you know what? I can feel exactly what these front wheels are doing. I love the Jaguar for this reason. This is where it excels. Once again, Lexus has done this thing, they, they use the voodoo. I'm going to make sure that you can drive the car fast, but because you're a human being, you are too stupid to drive it properly, I'm gonna make sure our Lexus can do it for you. That's exactly what they did. This thing has all-wheel drive, it hangs, and it just tenaciously chews into the ground, and it won't let go. And even if you think you've deactivated traction control, you probably haven't because, well, it's Lexus, so they're not gonna let you. It handles beautifully. The ride and handling balance is fantastic. Does it handle as well as the Jaguar? Yes, but the Jaguar feels more neutral. This car feels a little bit synthetic, but for the everyday driver who likes to have a little bit of fun, nice. 
We're in the Lexus and we're going to see how fast it goes 0 to 60. You ready, Nathan? Yes, I am. I'm in Sport Plus S. You're in double secret sport mode. Yeah. Now. All right, here we go. Nope. Oh, nice takeoff. Okay. Engine sounds good. Didn't get a full rev there, but you're at 6,000. It should be 60. All right, let's see what the app says. And the result, my friend, 0 to 60. Take a guess. Uh, seven? You are right! Whoa! 7.06 <laughs> seconds. Okay, as we always say, we're over a mile above sea level, and in this particular case, this car does not have a turbocharged engine or supercharged engine. It's normally aspirated, it's a regular V6, but I gotta tell you, for a car like this, that's really impressive. All right, Nathan, I have it in triple secret sport mode. <laughs> hey, are you gonna use the paddle shifters? No, this can't do what it does best, and that is shift for itself. Sweet. Okay, here we go, ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, bad launch. I don't know, that was a little slow on the launch. A little bit of wheel spin. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's see what the results are. Zero to 60 is, oh, what do you think? 7.5. 6.63. Damn! <laughs> Even with Damn! a bad launch. <laughs> Even with a crappy launch at high altitude. Herein lies a rub of value. If you were smart in the past, you would never buy a Jaguar new because these things depreciate like a rock. And the reason for that is they haven't been historically very reliable. However, they have gotten much better. They're now toward the top of J.D. Power's list of reliable cars. They're not at the top, but they are toward the top, which means that maybe you can go out and spend $67,000 for a car and not feel like it's gonna be worth half that in three years. Have they gotten better? Maybe, maybe. Competition, besides the Jaguar, the E-Class, the BMW 5 Series, and the Audi A6. All of those cars have a little bit more mm, testes over this car, but in terms of overall refinement and this amazing feel, I'm giving it to the Lexus. The stitching, the pewter finish, wow. Much better than the usual diluted kind of septic feeling that Lexuses normally have. This is fantastic. It's one of my favorite interiors. All right, guys, I'm going to show you something that just drives me absolutely batty. I start the uh, Jaguar up, put on my seatbelt, and uh, put it in reverse. Do you know it has a reverse camera? Because, you know what? There, finally. It took probably a good three seconds before that reverse camera came on because this is so slow. I've actually backed up my entire driveway without the camera ever coming on. Come on guys, you can do better. You know Nathan, I think the perfect sporty luxury sedan is somewhere in between these two cars. Yeah, and in the murky universe in between the two with a manual transmission, that would be the ultimate in luxury and performance. Because the Jaguar has the best engine note, oh. ride and handling, and the worst Oh. interface that screen that you touch that doesn't work oh oh it is so frustrating it's infuriating this has one of the best infotainment systems ever and its performance is really good but it's not quite there with the Jaguar so if it were my money I'd still go for the Jaguar despite how wonderful this car is and the fact that Lexus has finally grown an ego and a conscience I'd still buy the Jaguar as always this is Roman and Nathan see you guys next time It's a five passenger sport performance sedan. It's not meant to have a lot of utility. But having said that, it is very comfortable. I think the Lexus is a little bit more comfortable. The seats are a little bit more attuned to my big American ass, but this thing is fine. I could see myself driving all the way from Peoria to Peking.